Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's B. Aver here again, and this time we are here for a spoiler review. You saw the title of the video. You saw the thumbnail. We are here to talk about acrimony, but we're not just going to talk about acrimony. We're going to dive into full-blown spoilers, spoiling the movie as if you've already seen the movie. So I am going to talk spoilers up, down, left, right, in, and out as if you've already seen acrimony. If you have not seen acrimony, I strongly suggest you turn the video off now. Actually, before you turn the video off, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Then turn the video off. Go see the movie. Um, I don't think it's a good movie, but hey, you can go see the movie, come back, and then watch this. Or you can watch my non-spoilery review, uh, which is already uploaded to my channel. Uh, now, <clears throat> if you already know, uh, well, why am I doing this spoiler review? One, just because I really do want to. Um, because I, if you saw my non-spoiler review, you saw that I was very passionate about my feelings. I did not like this movie at all. I thought it was atrocious uh, from the depths of hell. Um, it was just pretty much um, any pretty one of the worst movies I've ever seen, especially given the talent um, that is behind the camera. The reason why I say talent is I think Tyler Perry is a talented director. Um, I am not I'm not a Tyler Perry hater. There are some people in the comments that were trying to like you, you, you're calling you, you're just a hater because you just didn't like the movie. Stupidest thing in the world. If you know me at all, I'm the farthest person from a hater, um, you know, seriously. But I will call out BS when I see it. And this that's what this uh, uh, movie is to me, just a big pile of BS. But I wanted to do this spoiler review because, um, I, like I said, I wanted to do it. Um, I was very passionate in my non-spoiler review. And I when I went back and looked at it. I, I even said this to myself. I was like, Brandon, I don't really think you gave r really good valid points as to why you just didn't like the movie. You was kind of just rambling and just saying how bad it sucked and, you know, da, 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 da. And just me, myself, I don't like it when a film reviewer, film critic, film pundit, whatever, anybody giving their opinion, they just they just say something sucks, but they don't, you know, go into the details of why it sucked. And there was actually a, a, a commenter that actually said that as well. And I was going to do this well before. Uh, this commenter said that I was just like, hey, I'm going to be doing a spoiler review. Uh, I do agree with you that I did not hit on some points. Um, but hey, you know, stay tuned in. And um, something else is, you know, a lot of people were just saying, hey, Brandon, you know, you're very funny. This is hilarious. You know, I was not trying to be funny other than the, the bleach in the thumbnail. OK, I was trying to be funny there. But I was just being myself actually in the review. But um, I just want to get into these points because um, I thought the movie was absolutely horrible. Um, things that I just didn't like about the movie was uh, a lot of people are just saying that it was made in eight days. And yes, it was shot in eight days. I have no problem with it being shot in eight days. Um, if Tyler Perry is able to accomplish a film, um, you know, all the production in eight days, hey, that saves you money. You know, do what you do, my brother. But I thought that it was lazy. I got some notes here. I thought that it was lazy. I thought the act acting was bad. Um, the execution on what they were trying to do uh, did not hit home. And I know what they were trying to do with uh, Melinda's character, Taraji P. Henson, having a personality disorder. There were just a number of things that I didn't find realistic and also just the character breakdowns. I'm going to be talking about Melinda's character played by uh, Taraji P. Henson. And I'm also going to be talking about Lyric Ben's, uh, Lyric Ben's character, Robert, her husband. But first off, I just want to uh, hit on one scene that really bugged me towards the very beginning of the film. Uh, well, actually, when the film starts off, we see that she is in a court hearing. Um, <clears throat> I can't remember. I, I actually, before I start, I was gonna see this movie again, but I told myself, no, I don't want to pay for this again, and I don't want to sit the, the, the two hours. And, and let me actually write that down. That's also another complaint I have that I'm just gonna uh, mark. <clears throat> um, it starts out either when she's either with the shrink or in the courtroom. I don't remember. So if I don't remember a scene uh, perfectly, guys, you know, forgive me. Uh, this was a while ago and I do see a lot of things. But the first thing that I uh, they really took me off at the very beginning of this movie where they were showing Melinda and Robert meeting in college. If you remember the scene correctly, it was raining. It, it, the scene started with it raining. And we also got uh, Melinda, her older self, Roger P. Henson, narrating, telling the story. It was raining outside. And I always want all my films to be just as realistic as possible from every iota, even if it's a Marvel film, you know, with Iron Man and Spider-Man, you know, I want those to be realistic in the areas that it can as well. Like, OK, Spider-Man and Iron Man aren't realistic, but if a regular human gets shot a number of times, they're going to bleed out and die most likely. So 
I just want everything to be more realistic. I did not find the way that Melinda and um, Robert's characters met in this film was realistic. First of all, it's raining as hell and they're both carrying around a bunch of papers, you know, just outside and they bump into each other and they drop the papers on the ground and it's wet. No, no it's raining. You know, put those, why are those papers not in your bag? Why are they not in a folder? Why are they not in a book? It just doesn't make sense. Nobody's going to be walking around outside with loose these papers like this, with this is your assignment and it's raining outside. That just doesn't make any sense right there. But then again, they drop the papers. They exchange the papers. Uh, Robert does something kind of creepy and reads her notes. And then he finds her dorm and goes deliver it. And, you know, that's just another thing right there that the acting just started to reveal itself that this bad. The young Robert and the young Melinda, they cannot act. It's just very frustrating to me. It, they just can't act. No, actually, none of the characters in this movie can act. But that's just one of the things that I noticed early on um, is that scene when they met. <laughs> Another scene, I really did not like Melinda. So uh, her parents or her guardians passed away. Uh, like, let, let me, okay. L let me talk about something personal, how I feel about things. And I'm just going to be honest. I am not a man or a male that will dog women out. I I'm just not going to do that. I am not, you know, if, if a woman... I'm not just going to, you know, run game and, you know, spit sweet, you know, things in the ear to where she, you know, where I'm seducing her and just telling her a bunch of things that are just not untrue. Things that women, you know, want to hear like, oh, yeah, baby, you know, I, I really do like you. You know, you just got this smile. You know, the way you walk into the room, you just light everything up. You're just so classy. Da, 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 da. If I don't mean that, I am not going to say that. You know what I'm saying? And I really do despise men that do just blatantly lie to women and take advantage of them to get them in the bedroom. You know what I'm saying? I just, I'm just not cool with that. You know what I'm saying? However, on the flip side, you know, like backing up real quick, you know, just telling a woman whatever they want to hear to get the draws or whatever. I'm just not going to do that. And then, you know, the woman gets emotional and some men get emotional too and they get attached after y'all have sex and you know, all that good stuff. And then you just, you know, you dump her, you dog her out. I'm just not that type of dude. You know, however, I, mean, I, I kind of, you know, I, I feel sorry for women in the sense that way to get dogged out. However, I do not feel sorry for women that just throw themselves out there and assumes that a guy likes them or just assumes that just because a guy said hello or, or gave them one sweet little compliment that he, you know, that, you know, the feelings are reciprocated like, oh, because he did this or oh, because he did this, you know, the guy really, really likes me, you know, or just throw themselves at a guy, gives it to him too early. And then, you know, they get mad and just, you know, hey, you know, I, I, I gave you my body. I gave you some of the cookies. And you now, why aren't we together? No, 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 no. I, I, I just despise all that. So the next thing seen to where I really just despised Melinda's character and just felt like she was dumb. And the writing in this film did try to make her self-aware because when she was in the office with the shrink, she was saying, my stupid behind and my dumb butt. And I was being an idiot and a moron and all that. She was trying try to be self-aware, but still, that's just not enough. It was a scene where her parents died or her mom died. They were at the funeral. Robert showed up at the funeral to provide his condolences to the family. And then what did Robert try to do? He knew that Melinda had her family there and her friends and all that stuff. He didn't try to make no scene. He didn't try to, uh, I'm dropping stuff. He didn't try to make a big scene. He didn't try to get all the attention. You know, he wasn't trying, you know, he, he just wasn't trying to do that. He showed up and he tried to dip out the back, you know, and, uh, and, and you know, like, hey, I'm not going to make no big scene that I'm leaving. Like, I'm just really important. We j I just met Melinda. So he tries to leave. So what does Melinda do? She finds him. She runs outside. Oh, hey, Robert, where are you going? This is I'm just leaving. Like, oh, you you leaving already? Well, like, yeah, you know, I mean, this is time for you and your family. I just wanted to show up and, you know, you send my condolences. You know, you got your family. Oh, well, no. Where, where you going? Well, I'm just going to walk. Oh, well, let me give you a ride. Oh, no, no. You got your family here. You know, go tend to your family. And Melinda, oh, no, I want to give you a ride. Hold on. Don't go anywhere. And, you know, she goes and got her purse, her keys or whatever. And then she takes Robert home or whatever. And Robert's like, all right. She's like, is this where you live? All right. Thank you for the ride. You know, I'll see you later. She's like, oh, no. Well, do you mind if I come upstairs? Do you mind if I come inside? 
why the funeral is still going on right now i mean i i don't under you know i don't know why you know i understand you you're mad you said you, you're grieving right now because your mom just died but you're trying to go into this dude's trailer or his not his apartment yeah his trailer and your your mom funeral is still going on you know robert didn't invite you up you're imposing and so okay so then they go into the trailer. You know what I'm saying? This is all on Melinda. So then they go, in, they're in the trailer and she's just like looking around like, you know, she in a mansion or something like that. Just like, oh my gosh, wow. There's really no reason why they should be, uh, or she should just be this into him at this point. I don't know. And so then she takes his hand and takes him into the bedroom. And then we hear narrating going on talking about Robert took advantage of, of me grieving and then we had sex i'm just like wait a minute no 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 he didn't take advantage of anything you brought this onto yourself you have offered to take him home you invited yourself into his house or his trailer you grabbed him by the hand and was like hey let's go to the back but then you want to come in talking about he's taking advantage of you absolutely not that is just a bunch of bull crap and that just really pissed me off and that's just like another reason why i'm I just was not on board with Melinda's character. Another thing that I wasn't on board with Melinda's character is just, like I said in the uh, non-spoiler review, she's dumb, moronic, idiotic. Okay, she tells him that she gives, uh, she tells him, um, you know, that she got the inheritance and she got uh, over 300K. It's just like, you don't do that. You just don't, why, why, why are you doing that? You know, you, you're giving all of your money away, all your information. And I talked to this in the non-spoiler review. You're buying him a car. The car was like $24,000. Why the hell does a broke college kid need a $24,000 car? You know what I'm saying? You better get you a Toyota Corolla or something like that or a cash car, you know, to go A and B. And if you're driving a Toyota Corolla, I am not knocking on Toyota Corolla. Toyotas are very good cars. You know what I'm saying? Uh, me, you know, me and my family, we grew up with the Toyota Priva, Previa uh, van. You know what I'm saying? You know, I was navy blue. Uh, had that car for a long ass time, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Dad for buying that car for my family. I ain't had no Toyotas, but anyway, I'm being silly right there. But um, uh, she buying them cars and things like that. So this really, I, I'm not liking Melinda. She can't act. Um, I'm not liking the scene where they exchange. Uh, she's giving all her information away. Um, you know, she's giving up her, she's giving up her sex and blaming him when it's completely her fault. You need to control all your emotions. Something else that I just don't like is he cheated on her, right? Um, you know, I can understand, you know, you're young, you're dumb, you know, we've all been there. She's cheating on him. She got mad. She ran over the trailer. I think that was just a little too over the top. Uh, you know, Robert comes outside. He's all apologetic. Oh, baby, I'm sorry. Blah, blah, this, blah, blah, that. She takes him back. For so they they are I guess dating for another two years. They end up being married for like 18, 19 years. And then when the crap hits the fan, she's blaming him for cheating again and he wasn't cheating. The only time he cheated was when they were in a relationship in college, well before they was married. And so the plot itself, again, where it reads uh, a faithful wife, tired of standing by her devious husband, is enraged when it becomes clear she has been betrayed. He was she was never betrayed. He never betrayed her. Uh, a faithful wife he was a faithful husband he never cheated he wasn't devious he was sorry he was a sorry ass man which i want to talk about in a second but he wasn't devious so that's the that's the synopsis that tyler perry has here advertising that's the synopsis of the trailers you know and that just doesn't add up he wasn't devious he wasn't cheating there's just no proof of anything she's like i'm tired of you cheating on me he's like what are you talking about i did it once over 20 years ago 18 20 years ago and i didn't do it again so there's just something else that um this I, I was not a fan of all right, now I don't want to talk about lyric bent yet. Uh, we talked about that blaming him cheating. Also, the coincidence of you know the girl that he did cheat with that he's working with her later on in the office that was just kind of ridiculous to me. Uh, the eleventh. Well, let me talk about. Oh no, defending green screen. Of course. Okay, so uh, let me see. Anything else? Okay, Melinda. Let's just stay on Melinda. Fast forward until the end of the movie. She said time and time again that she was just tired. Uh, she sacrificed everything. This dude, the mortgage, the house. I think she gave him $1 million or $1.1 million. That was the amount of money that she stated that she wanted back from him. You know, she divorced him. She was like, I still want my money. So what did he do? 
Not only did he give her her money back, he gave her 10 times that amount of money, $10 million worth. $10 million worth, he got her the house back, and she still is not accepting of that. She's losing her mind, going crazy. Some people in the comments are like, well, it makes sense to me because, uh, and let me press pause here. All films are subjective. Um, so if you like this movie a lot and you thought it was one of Tyler Perry's best, I have no quarrels with that. That's perfectly fine. All, like I said, all films are subjective. Just because I liked or disliked something doesn't mean you should feel the same way. Everybody's entitled to their own opinion. My opinion is not more valid than anybody else's. So I'm just telling you why I didn't like it. Uh, but people were like, oh, it made sense to me. Personality disorder is a real thing. Someone in my family has personality disorder. Oh, I know somebody that has personality disorder or this type of disorder. Or I've dated someone that has personality disorder. Or, you know, in the black community, you know, a lot of times black people, you know, will have something wrong with us mentally. And then we don't want to talk about it. We want to uh, sweep it under the rug and say something like, oh, that's just that white people shit. Or that's just that white people stuff. You know, white people don't want to talk to a shrink or a psychiatrist or whatever. Black people don't do that, which is really dumb and problematic that you know black people we should get professional help when these situations do arise to my understanding i don't know how often it does but i know it happens so yes that is realistic but just because a situation is realistic does not mean that it was executed uh the way it properly should have been in the film and i just don't feel that it was executed here because the only time that we we get to see todd rogers p hence his character on a 20 year growth on a 20 year path from young college days up until you know uh 15 plus years of marriage or whatever and the only time it has ever come up that she had a personality disorder was when she ran over the trailer and then decades later over two decades later when her family brought it up and what her shrink did or whatever and then when she was um in the courtroom now, what frustrated me is even in the, when she was with the shrink and she was just talking, the camera, she was on the couch and the camera was looking at her. This just comes back to me saying that the film was lazy because I wanted more of a back and forth between Taraji P. Henson and the shrink. I wanted to see, you know, Taraji P. Henson is a great actress. And I felt that in this movie, she was overacting or the acting didn't match because everybody in the rest of the film was below her as far as talent is concerned. So it didn't match. Here you have a bunch of people that can't act, then somebody that's acting very, very good. And when you put those two things together, it just doesn't match. It just seems sloppy and just disjointed. And it just, you know, there's no levels to it. I mean, they on both folds or both accounts, it just seems bad. But it, particularly in that scene with the shrink, I wanted to see the character reactions of the shrink, of the psychiatrist or the psychologist, or whatever. I wanted to see how, like, like, huh, okay, hmm. You know, she's taking her notes. Well, that's quite interesting, but we just got these bland lines of dialogue from a ghost character that we never get did get to see. Maybe that's what Tyler Perry wanted to do on purpose, and he was just trying to, uh, you know, punch the, uh, the just to hit the point home and focus the character on Taraji and just how crazy she was acting and things like that. But other than that, it just, the film just didn't really good, do a good job of me telling me how crazy she was. I mean, if she was crazy and doing things like this on throughout the movie, but uh, she was very soft-spoken throughout their whole marriage. It's like, okay, Robert, okay. Well, he's okay, baby, yeah, I, but I, I can do it. I believe in myself, I can do it. And she just, okay. And then all of a sudden she just snaps. I mean, that's just not, I mean, people do snap, but it was all over the place to me. It just wasn't uh, seamless. It just seemed like it was random. Like, oh, and then at the end of the movie, she turns into some like Jason type character. Um, so I talked about the acting, uh, eight days, uh also let's talk about robert real quick okay um i didn't like to well before i didn't like taraji p henson um pre-divorce and post-divorce pre-divorce she was just dumb moronic tell all her business gave up the ass too early but just letting this dude go into bankruptcy da, 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 da. i didn't like her afterwards because this dude did rob while robert was a sorry ass man he was redeemable because he did get the house back and he also did uh, pay her back the money. $1 million, $10 million. Real quick before we go to Robert, just another illogical thing to me that I did not like is there was there shouldn't even been a case. She tried to go to case and sue him. It was like the attorney should not even have said to her, accepted her case. Hey, 
all these dates of the deal was after your divorce. You divorced him. He gave you this money. I cannot take this case. I'm sorry. I am not going to take your money. I mean, it was just embarrassing. Even the even the judge himself was just saying, this is ridiculous. He gave you the house back. He gave you 10 times the money that you was asking for prior to the movie. He didn't. The judge didn't know that she said that, but 10 times more. She said that she wanted her million dollars back. He got $10 million. And plus, she divorced him. It's just, it's just the stupidest scenario ever. And people are just like, some people that like the movie, that's fine. I'm not going to argue with you on it. Like, well, she had a personality disorder. You know, that's why she was being un, uh, irreasonable. No, Tyler Perry wrote this. He could have wrote a better reason to why that she snapped it. Or, or, or she could, he didn't have, she, he could have wrote the film to where he did not give the house back or he did not give $10 million. He could have said, here's a million, here's a 1.5. He could have written a much better way as to why uh, she was overreacting or she could have gave a, he could have gave a better reason to why she was just so angry and raw rate. But Tyler Perry wrote this movie to where he was just a perfect little angel. And I, I, I just, I'm just not buying that. I'm, I don't care if she had personality disorder. It did not line up with the narrative that he wrote to me. And that's just bad. But Robert was so damn sorry. There is no way in the world. I'm not married. I'm not having the kids, but there, if, if I do get married, I do want to get married. If, if God blesses me with a wonderful wife, uh, someday there is no way in hell that I'm ever going to have her being the breadwinner, her bringing in more money. Or even if that there's nothing wrong with a woman making more money than me, I'm going to be doing something. I'm going to be cleaning. Like if, if I don't got no job, the house is going to the house never going to be dirty. The house ain't ever going to be dirty. The lawn is going to have, it's going to be the best lawn ever. We're going to have the hedges cut. We're going to have the grass cut uh, every day. It's just going to be flawless. Now I will give Robert this. At least he was putting it down in the bedroom. I will give him that, but I'm going to be, I'm the house going to inside, outside the house going to be clean. I'm going to be cooking every day. I'm going to be rubbing my uh, wife's feet every day. I'm going to be trying. I'm not just going to be doing. I'm not. I'm just not going to be having that, man. Are you serious? What the crap? Man, why would you write a character like this, Tyler Perry? That's just so sorry. And then when Melinda's brother and my family came in later on, talking about basically they just, Robert, you just sorry. You a sorry ass dude. You ain't worth crap. Blah, blah, blah. Tyler Perry going to put the dialogue in the movie where he talking to his wife and they leave talking about, well, at least you could defend me. I'm like, hell no. Everybody in the movie was like, boo, F this, you suck. Nah, I, and I screamed that too, like, oh, shut up. No, I I, I, I screamed, oh, shut up when, um, uh, when, um, uh, like the last time when he's like, I can do it, baby, but I can do it. And then the family comes and they offer him some stuff like, hey, you know, we can hire your own as, um, uh, you know, you can deliver these trucks. We got these big clients. We can't miss one client or whatever, blah, blah, blah. I would never put myself in the situation. I mean, we, I don't know what's going to happen next year, 10 years from now, 20 years from now. But even if I don't have no job and my wife is the only one bringing in the movie, in the movie, in, in the money, I'm, there is just no way in hell that I'm just going to be working on this little project that ain't bringing in no income and not have no damn job. No, I'm going to be working 40 hours, 50 hours, 80 hours first. And then if I have extra time left over, I can dedicate it to my uh, to my project. And then if we make millions of dollars, hey, but bro, you invested 24 seven in this, not doing nothing, man. Y'all just going into debt, into debt, into debt. I just despise characters like that. I despise men like that. No, I, I'm just, how can a man live with himself? I, I, I personally just feel like men should be the provider. Uh, and even if the woman is making more, hey, you need to be making it up in other ways. Like, I'm, I'm just saying, man, if we have kids, I'm going to be taking the kids to school. I'm going to be picking them up. I'm going to be brushing their teeth. You know, I don't I don't mind. I, I'm not one of these uh Man, I feel like the male should be the provider, but at the same time, I'm not going to be, my wife makes more than me. Shit, you know, if she, shit, she educated, you know, and right now in this country, black women are the most educated uh, group of people in, in in this country right now. You know what I'm saying? So if she want to go out and get her, and I know a whole bunch of sisters out there that got getting their MBA and CPA and all this stuff. Hey, more power too. I just got me a little bachelor's, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so, but I, I, there's just, no, there is just no way I'm not going to be pulling weight. Man, no, this dude was working at doing doing dishwashing stuff. Everyone wants to buy and not having no job. That's just ridiculous to me. Yeah, he did redeem himself, but, uh, you know, it, it is what it is.
And so uh, just some other stuff. The green screen was just just crap. I mean, Tyler Perry, my goodness gracious, man. That was the worst green screen, blue screen ever in, uh, known to man. I mean, my gosh, that looked blatantly fake right there. Just cheap and lazy. And the budget for this is $20 million. I don't know where the money went. It either went to your side or to Rogers, but it didn't go to that green screen, definitely. Also, just the 1130 meeting, like, Lyric, why would you, like, no. If the lady called, if the, if if this is if this is a multi-million dollar deal, you cannot tell me that these executives at this company and I've never negotiated a multi-million dollar deal before. So if you have, let me know in the comments. But I doubt if it's potentially worth that much. Oh, no, you have to come right now today at the last minute, 1130. If you don't, it's off. Nope, you didn't come now. Uh-uh. I mean, if, if that's the case, they wasn't that passionate about it anyway. And this dumbass going to leave the, he on his way to the place. No, I, look, look. Uh, let me go and deliver this real quick. If the if your boss is for real, let me go drop this fish off. Whatever delivery, I will be there afterward. I may not be there at eleven thirty, but let me go drop this off so I don't let my wife down, my uh, my uh, in laws, and we don't lose the house. But no, he just gonna drop everything he doing. Just f the job, f the house, f everything else, and then go and no. So I don't blame her for um I don't blame her for divorcing him, but that eleven thirty thing was just stupid to me. But uh, I talked about the court scene. And then last but not least is the boat scene where she just transformed into Jason, Freddy Krueger, and Michael Myers in one. And just out of nowhere, the film just turned into a horror movie. I don't know how she just snuck him to, up on the boat. I, did she swim on the boat? Because, because she couldn't swim on the boat because her, dry, dry, her, dry, her dress was dry. And then um, the boat had about 15 crew members. Cause about t fifteen of them hoes uh, of them jumped off the damn boat or whatever. So I don't I don't know where they were. Were they partying in one room and she snuck on before it took off? I, I, I don't I don't know. I mean, she did she chop off his foot or not? That just was just it, it was just dumb. The movie was a mess. I really don't want this thing to go over thirty minutes. But uh, let's see, is there anything else? Tram no, it's transformed into Jason. People jump from the boat. Uh, yeah, talked about that. On the last blog, it was this one scene where they was in the house, and everybody has a different culture, but this just doesn't seem realistic to me. She's like, "Oh well, me and my husband are married. Now. We're going to be moving out because we are married now. Like, why don't y'all move out a long time ago? I don't know. But guys, if you like this movie, hey, that's fine. That is fine. If you like this movie, I did not like this movie, and I just want to give the spoiler review to talk about why I did not like it. All films are subjective. I still think this movie is an abomination. I still think it's one of the worst. Uh, yeah, Ta Taraji, you're not doing well this year. You got primary and this piece of crap not doing well. Tyler Perry, please don't, please. You 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 are a decent director, so I like half of your films. Other half, I really don't care for. So I'm not gonna say you're a crap director because you're not. You're very smart, man. I respect your hustle, but I just think that this film right here was just a lazy attempt, a lazy piece of crap that I think you should be ashamed of yourself. But hey, if you liked it and everybody else liked the movie, hey, that's fine. I didn't. I just wanted to give you my reasons why. Well, guys, that's just my opinion on Acrimony's spoiler field review. What did you think? Spoil below in the comments. It don't even matter. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you don't, that's fine. But you can still subscribe to my channel. Go to my website. Check me out there. Bookmark it. Also, look me up on social media. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. It's right there at the bottom of the screen, and I made it very easy by providing a link to all the good stuff down in the description box below. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review of uh, spoilers for Alcimony. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.